In this video I will show you how the sedimeter can be used to measure sedimentation. Here we have it in a tank with some white sand on the bottom and a little bit of darker soil on top. And it's measuring in real time every five seconds. The top chart here shows the intensity from the 36 optical backscatter detectors, one centimeter apart. And in this chart, in the graph in the bottom here, we see the level in red line is the interpreted bottom level and the blue line is the turbidity measured on the number 37 optical backscatter detector, which is mounted right here. So let's add some sediment to this and see how it will be picked up by the instrument. Here I have soil mixed in water. I'll have to shake it a little bit to, to be able to pour it in. So, okay, now the tank went completely dark. We can still, the blinking that you see is actually from this one here that's reflected. So you don't see through it. We can't see the light of the sedimenter. We don't see a thing actually. We just see that the whole tube is, is dark. So let's go over here and see what the instrument has picked up. We've seen here how the, the sediment in the water went up first and then gradually fell back down. And on the red line we see how the, the bottom level is going up gradually. We can change the scale actually. We can take this tool here, the zoom tool, and zoom in on the level. So, and then we can see out here that we had a level of about 8.53 centimeters and it's gone up to approximately 8.59. But we don't have to go to the graph to measure it. We can look in the table in the bottom. Here is a tab here called monitoring. If we go to monitoring and click reset it will take the start values as the origin and then we go to present situation and it will show us the difference directly. So in this case we have an accumulation of 0 0.054 centimeters or half a millimeter and there it shows the turbidity. You see now it's starting to clear up. We can see the lights again through the water column and there is the the bottom where we have a lighter sand and then on top of that the dark sand that I put in which is hardly visible because it's so dark. So now I will pour in some more of that white sand on this and we'll see what happens. Create a lot of turbulence when it's falling down. should start to accumulate as a wider layer on top. Yeah, now we can see how thick that dark layer is. It's now been three hours and you can see the light sand over the darker material I put in and then a little bit of dark on top because that's the resuspended material that has been sedimenting on top of the white sand. As you see here, it's cloudy. We can just barely see the light through it. And if we go over here, we can see, well, I have to zoom out again on this one because I had zoomed in. You can see here the level went up a little bit right here, which is corresponding to where it went up here. And I'll zoom in on that. You can see there the red line went up when I put in the dark material and then it went up a lot more when I put in the white washed sand. And the turbidity went from zero to about 140 when I put in the light material, then it started falling back when it sedimented. When I put in the white sand, it, it uh, rose up and fell back immediately because the sand sinks so quickly. But as you see, it didn't 
fall back to the same level, which means that there was some resuspension of the dark humus, and then that sedimented on top of the white sand, as we saw, the black cover over the light sand, and it's been gradually falling down. And uh, going a little bit up and a little bit down here, it's around 30 FBU. FBU being Formacin backscatter unit, which is the same as Formacin turbidity units, FTU, only that it's by saying FBU, we define that it's 180 degree backscatter. And uh, it's also similar to NTU, normal, normal turbidity units, except that one is measured with white light. FTU and FBU is measured with near infrared light. So, that ends the experiment. And as we've seen, you can use the sedimeter to measure both the turbidity when a sediment pulse comes in, suspended sediment, and to see how it's settling from suspension and how that accumulates on the bottom. Given the high resolution of the bottom measurement, it's also possible to see when uh, there is any change on the bottom, which could be, for instance, due to uh, sediment transport, bed load transport.